back everyone. Today we're going to look at the Ruger Blackhawk Elite .177 caliber break barrel rifle from Umarex. It's a spin-off of the Umarex Surge. It sells for $98 at Walmart and the Umarex Surge sells most places for $99.99 so they're very closely priced. Mechanically, the rifles are identical and very similar in design. Some of the differences between the Surge and the Ruger Black Hawk Elite. The first is the muzzle brake. They are the same shape but just uh, different moldings. The second is the forearm. The forearm is shaped identically to the Surge, but the Surge has horizontal indentations, whereas this one has diagonal indentations. And the next change is on the Umarex Surge, you have finger impressions molded into the uh, grip, and this does not and also in the Umarex Surge you've got a little more beef right in here the cheek piece is much more pronounced and there's more to the stock back here and then this one also has a Ruger emblem on it at first glance the rifles look uh, pretty much identical they've just did a few uh, cosmetic changes to the stock to, so they can call it the Ruger Black Hawk Elite. Okay, both rifles have the same trigger. Uh, these triggers feel different than uh, the Airhawk and Airhawk Elite and Ruger Air Magnums. Uh, this one has a lighter trigger, it has a longer first stage and it fires as soon as it hits the second stage so it takes a little bit of getting used to but overall I was able to do pretty good with this trigger. It has the automatic safety just like uh, the Airhawks. Uh, you press in, it comes with some very cheap low profile scope mounts. You have a single screw clamping to the dovetail and a single screw on each cap and I did have to tighten them up a couple of times the scope was working loose okay, the scope itself is Ruger's uh, 4x32 scope uh, no adjustable objective or magnification or anything uh, it works adequately uh, at 20 yards I could uh, get a pretty good uh, picture of the target it seems to be getting a little cheaper now. The turret caps are now plastic instead of metal, but it does function uh, adequately at uh, 20 yards. Okay, the rifle is rated at 1200 feet per second shooting alloy pellets and 1000 feet per second shooting lead pellets. It weighs 7.85 pounds both in the Black Hawk Elite and the Umarex Surge versions. 44.8 inches long and uh, cocking effort is very easy. I haven't measured it but it feels like it's between 25 and 30 pounds cocking effort. Very easy to cock. Okay, I'm not exactly sure why uh, Umarex feels they need to do this but they always take this uh, quick tips uh, propaganda and they stick it in here and then close the barrel on it and leave it while it from the time it's manufactured right up until the time it's sold which that can end up being years and you end up with this seal being completely flattened when I broke this thing open I checked and it was just it was below the level of the metal there was no way it was touching the breech so that was bad. I cleaned the barrel and I fired 
about 25 shots through it and it was still firing hot so I put a few drops of chamber lube into the compression tube to kind of loosen up some of the gunk in there and shot another 25 shots and then I ran 10 across the crony with the Crossman Premier Heavy 10.5 grains and then I took the breech seal out and put in a new breech seal so it now protrudes above the metal surface and refired it and it dropped the extreme spread by 10 feet per second and also increased the muzzle velocity over 10 feet per second with those shooting those heavies. Right after I cleaned the barrel I tightened up the stock screws which you can see right here. Uh, use the same Allen wrench that you use to put your scope on. I tightened both of them and the front mounting screw here and I shot a lot of shots across the crony and it was very erratic then I realized that the barrel felt like it was getting looser and looser and looser so I checked and this screw right here that you know that goes through the uh, receiver and the breech block was extremely loose from right here I could turn it. So I had to break the rifle down and take that screw out, clean up the threads, put some blue thread locker on it and put it back together and all of the screws holding it together by that time were already loose so I had to put blue thread locker on all of the screws. This gun was very shoddily assembled at the factory and it took an incredible number of shots before this thing finally settled down. It was about 155 shots before I finally started getting some consistent readings over the crony. Okay I've already shot all the heavier pellets across the crony from 7.9 grain all the way to the 10.65 grain now I'm going to show you the numbers for the RWS Hypermax 5.2 grain pellets and then we'll shoot the last five shots with the RWS 7 grain hobbies. At a low of 1177, high of 1195, average 1186, extreme spread of 17.56, standard deviation 7.68 that's not too bad here we had a low of 1028 a high of 1047 average of 1040 feet per second extreme spread of 19.4 feet per second standard deviation 7.93 that's well above the 1000 feet per second claimed average the gun did very well with the 5.2 grain RWS Hypermac pellets it generated 114.8 decibels that is quite loud and on the RWS hobbies which you know it exceeded the manufacturers claim by 40 feet per second we had a 102.9 decibel reading for all of the other pellets the decibel reading was 97 to mid 98 decibel range shooting the heavier pellets it's backyard friendly our most consistent pellet over the chronograph was the H&N Crow Magnum 9.26 grain. We had a low of 888.5 feet per second, a high of 895.8 feet per second, average of 892.6 feet per second, extreme spread was only 7.3 feet per second, standard deviation 2.44. That's very good considering the numbers I was getting before we were getting 60, 70, 
foot per second extreme spreads and uh, it's settled down quite a bit now especially since I tightened the breech block. Our second most consistent pellet was the Crossman Premier Hollow Point 7.9 grain. It had a low of 971.5 feet per second, a high of 981.5 feet per second, an average of 976.4 feet per second, extreme spread was 10.09, standard deviation 3.6. That generated 16.73 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Our most powerful pellet was the JSB Match Diablo Exact 8.44 grain. They had a low of 958.5 feet per second, a high of 974.6 feet per second, average of 965.7 feet per second, extreme spread was 16.05, standard deviation 6.24. Those pellets gave us 17.48 foot-pounds muzzle energy. That is quite impressive. That is much better than any of the Ruger Airhawks or Airhawk Elite that we've had in the past. This gun produces some pretty good feet per second and some pretty good muzzle energy. Normally, when I do an accuracy test, I usually end up shooting anywhere from 50 to 100 pellets uh, at the target. Sometimes I've had to shoot as many as 150 at the target before I start getting reasonable groups. But this rifle had so many rounds fired through it over the chronograph, just waiting for the feet per second to settle down, that the barrel was pretty well broke in by the time we got through with the crony readings. I really only had to take about 20 shots at the target before I did our actual accuracy test. Okay, the only pellet I shot in the accuracy test was number two on the chart for consistency. That was the Crossman Premier 7.9 grain hollow. They did quite well. And let's take a look at uh, that accuracy and we'll go from there. We're going to take five shots at the target and uh, see how we do at 20 yards. Well, I can cover all five holes with a quarter, so that's only, uh, you know, 25 shots uh, at a target. I think that's pretty good. I think with a little more break in and some practice getting used to it, and with possibly a better scope, this thing at 20 yards would be shooting uh, dime patterns. You know, after all the headaches I've gone through with this rifle, it's uh, turning out to be pretty accurate. Okay, all in all, the rifle's been a royal pain in the tush uh, from the get-go. You know, after I cleaned the barrel, tightened up all the loose screws, and just firing so hot, I you know, just uh, I had to go to the 10.5 grains because everything was going supersonic even after about 40 shots. Finally, after about 165 shots, it settled down and got consistent. In the middle there, that's when I had to stop and retighten this screw and retighten all the others and put the blue thread locker on them because there was none from the factory. There should have been, but there was not. As I was setting up to do the accuracy test, these screws had loosened and I had to retighten them again. There should be blue thread locker on them too. So if you get one of these guns, just be advised you're best to take your two screws out here, here, tighten up this screw and put blue thread locker on it before you tighten it up and then put blue thread locker on all your stock mounting screws and you shouldn't have any problems but you're probably going to have to fire a bunch of pellets through it to clean it out even with the barrel cleaned it took 165 shots to get this thing to settle down that is way too many but anyway, it did settle down and I was able to shoot 
a real nice uh, shot pattern. I had actually shot a couple even tighter than that. They were dime size before I actually turned on the camera. Can never seem to duplicate it on camera, but we were still able to cover the shot pattern with a quarter at 20 yards. And for a gun that's only been fired at a target 20, 25 shots, I thought that was pretty good. Never really had time to get a feel for the gun, feel for the trigger. That'll get better with time. The rifle does end up accurate and powerful. And it's only got a 4x32 scope, but it's a usable 4x32 scope, at least up to 20 yards. I would recommend getting some stronger scope rings, and these scope rings are so low you almost have a difficult time getting at your safety because it sets so low, very low profile. The rifle deserves a better scope. If you're going to shoot beyond 20 yards, that would get one. I think the rifle's got enough power to be accurate well beyond 20 yards. I guess the bottom line is it's only a $98, $99 rifle, and you just can't complain a whole lot about a $98 to a $99 rifle. This thing is more powerful and more accurate than a lot of rifles costing a lot more. I'm, even though it was a problem child, you know, it just took a little time and patience. And be advised, if yours has the warning in here, first thing you're going to want to do is replace that breech seal. If you take a credit card and s slide it across the face of the breech block, and it does not grab the seal, the seal is compressed too far. If you slide a credit card across it and it catches, it should be okay. That's about all I have to say. It's a, it's a decent weight. It's a, heavier than a few that look like it. It weighs more than, say, the TR-77. Uh, you know, being 7.85, it's about 9 tenths of a pound heavier. And, you know, you can feel it but it's not that heavy that you can't go jogging through the woods with it. And uh, shooting a heavier lead pellet is not all that loud. You do not want to shoot the lightweight pellets in the backyard. It is too loud for that. That's my review of the Ruger Blackhawk Elite and Umarek Surge. Thank you for watching.